Hi, how are you? I am fine and dandy. How are you? I would say fine and dandy as well. <laughs> it's a great, a great phrase in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it uh, catches people a little off guard. So. <laughs> um, I like that. I have to start saying that. I say things like um, the schnazzy and like schnazzy. I've been trying to bring bitching back for a while, but dandy's yeah. a good one. Dandy. 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 That's what I, I like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, before I have to uh, jump into some questions about this movie, which I am, I've seen it twice now. I, I'm floored by this movie. It's so, uh, I feel like your character sort of like just grabs us by the back of the neck and just drags us, you know, along with you, which I love. Um, and even though I knew what happened, you know, I saw it, I think in the summer, I saw it at Outfest when they did like a virtual festival. And then I watched it again last night and it was just sort of like, uh, <laughs> I knew what was going to happen, but I was so surprised by what happened, which I think is a sort of testament to the staying power of it. Um, and uh, also a big fan of yours. Uh, you scared the shit out of me. And like, you're, <laughs> I'm sure people tell you that all the time, but uh, yeah, when I know that you're in something, it was like, she's going to make some really awesome choices. So um taking the time to talk to me sorry I'm just gushing at you now no of course and th thank you for that not only I mean seeing the movie twice and and being so supportive of it really appreciate that truly yeah. a lot went into making the movie <laughs> so yeah. Lauren and I every single day we're like yeah people like it this is so cool yeah I was starting to see like a lot of rumblings like on like Twitter and stuff like a lot of people were saying like you know what's the movie that you would recommend to somebody to see before the movie is over and time after time a lot of people were mentioning the novice which is which is really great um really good. yeah um how much did you know about rowing before this movie because i feel like Nothing. the only thing that i knew was just like hot dudes rowing in a in like a river somewhere mm -hmm. but what was like your experience with that the the most I knew about rowing was the hot dudes rowing in the in, in like the social network. That was like the only scene yeah. I've ever seen of, of rowing in a movie, and and it's it's really well done. It's really beautiful. Um, but that was like the extent of it. And I remember reading the script. Like I just kept imagining myself as the Winklevoss twins, and I was like, wow, like this. You know, the, on the outside, it looks like this incredibly beautiful, graceful sport um but something that I think we captured so well and that I personally experienced learning how to do the sport was what it actually feels like yeah. which is it can feel like you're on the cusp of like the most incredible high of your life while you also feel like you're about to throw up and you have no control over your body even though you're working your body in the same mm -hmm. like cyclical movement over and over and that's just because like the lactic acid is building up and your ass is cramping and you're sitting on a seat and for some reason you feel like you can't breathe and you're about to die <laughs> or when you're in the boat and you're like staring at the ponytail of the girl in front of you for hours and hours and hours on end uh -huh. um and then like those wonderful, beautiful moments of like being alone in your own boat, kind of in the middle of nowhere before the sun rises when like the world is completely silent and it feels like there's like so much possibility. I mean, it, it really, it was really incredible to, to film the movie in this way because I personally felt so connected with, with rowing by the time we started filming mm -hmm. that I had already experienced very similar things as Alex and as myself that I could then kind of bring to Alex because I had basically done a lot of the same things that she does. I went from being a complete novice to like having to master the sport to the best of my abilities in the time that I had. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, God, if somebody would say to me like, all right, this is the amount of physical training you have to do. Um, I don't know how I don't, I could not do it. There was, there was a shot of you near the end of the movie where you pick up the boat all by yourself, the white boat. That was me. You're like, boom, just over your head. And I, I was actually curious, sort of physically, what about your own physical strength sort of surprised you? Because the ease in which, you know, where, where Alex is at the end of the movie, the way that you move your body is so different. Even just walking around is so different from where we see you at the start of the movie. So I was curious what like took you by surprise. 
I think for myself, I had never gained that much muscle before. So mm-hmm. on top of the six hours of rowing I was doing, starting at 4.30 in the morning here in LA to prepare for the shoot because this is an incredibly hard sport to learn and I didn't have much time to do it. So, you know, six hours a day was barely enough. Um, I would go four times a week and work out with a trainer named Beck Wilcock, who's actually a friend of mine. Um, and she trained me to help me gain 12 pounds of muscle for this role. And, and we really did have that goal in mind of like, I told her there's a scene at the end of the movie where I have to lift the boat over my shoulder and carry it in. And I, I know this movie, I've been told that there's not a double, so I need to be able to do that. And so that was our goal kind of moving forward was, you know, we didn't have a certain amount of pounds of muscle that I wanted to like gain. The idea was to kind of bulk as much as we possibly could in six Mm -hmm. weeks, which is technically enough time, but still like, it's always better to have more time. Um, And, and at the same time, really kind of practice that movement because that boat's like 45 to 50 pounds. And it's not just holding the boat on the shoulder. It's also being able to carry the oars in the other hand. And the boat is so big about balancing it with your core and all of that. So, you know, that was our, our literal goal for like what I can actually do. And, and the strength too, like, you know, when you bulk up that much, you start to stand differently. You do start to walk differently. It does like change your complete physicality. I had never, I've always been a very small frame of person. Like running has been my favorite kind of form of exercise because I can do it anywhere, especially when I travel for work. And it's like, it's easy. I'm not very coordinated. So with this, like, it was like, I had to learn how to do this, like very, you know, coordinated, but at least cyclical. So like one movement, once I got it down, it was like, okay, I can do this over and over again. And, and, and also at the same time, you know, really kind of move into this new form of like having traps and like arm muscles and, and, you know, not feeling as like feminine as I, as I did, like, I felt very, very strong and very emotionally vulnerable Mm -hmm. um, given how much I was like, you know, working out every single day and and also, you know, exhausting myself through, through the sport really kind of put me in an emotionally vulnerable space where I felt like an open wound on set, which really, I think helped my performance. I mean, I really found Alec, that was, that was where I found found her was like out on the water at five in the morning when the sun was rising in Marina Del Rey. I remember it clicking for me and being like, this is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Not all the pain and all that. It's this moment. It's this yeah. little moment that, you get that just makes you go, Ooh, wow. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> There's some shots when you were, um, you know, out there on the water by yourself towards the end of the movie. Um, even, you know, the way that Lauren shot the movie, it's so, uh it's stunning just even the way like the oar is like this like much off the water and the way it just glides it sort of even like feels like animation almost like it's so (laughs) and it's so picturesque um I sort of wanted to ask about (laughs) your character's mental state while she is rowing like I I thought the way I love how, you know, the camera's like right in your face the whole time. It's sort of very intimate. It's sort of, uh, um, you know, I, I'm wondering if you thought maybe that's like a private thing, like what your character is thinking the whole time. I was sort of uh, obsessed with like what you <laughs> were thinking while you are sort of, uh, you know, going through the most physical demanding thing that in your entire life. It was different for each scene and Lauren yeah. and I spoke about that actually a lot was, you know, where where are we at which point in the story and mm-hmm. and how are we showing how are we showing that change? You know, rowing on the water, for example, the first time, like the first knob when they do the freshman uh freshman four, like that day is like the worst day. Like, you know, all I was thinking when I was rowing, it was so funny because I I'd gotten actually pretty decently good up to that point. And so I was just like, okay, how do I fuck this up? <laughs> like I have to make this look really bad because this is the first day. You know, we have to yeah. we have to show that there's a long way to go, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, seat races were another thing. Like that was something Lauren and I spoke about because like we wanted this contrast of like where you see Amy in the boat and she is just like pulling and like that Alex is kind of like you know when you're in a boat with four people 
and your setting stroke is Alex's and nobody else is following suit and you're all out of rhythm, you really can't, you can't move the boat the way that you want to. It's really frustrating. And so this idea was like the entire time the seat race is going on, that instead of normally seeing her very present in, in the races that she's in, to really kind of pull her back into the same kind of like place that she is a lot of the time in her own head where the entire time she's going, oh my God, they're throwing the race. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. they're throwing the race. But she doesn't really know until then you, then you all know. <laughs> and then it's like, well, fuck. <laughs> and then yeah. it's like the whole world kind of crumbling in on her. So, you know, really like my performance in the boat was something that we spoke about a lot. And it was something I actually had to kind of like remind myself before each take because especially when you're physically doing something you really are I was trying to be like okay I need to like obviously you know row so I don't flip the boat but I also need to be in the space I was lucky that we you know we had incredible grips and Todd our DP was amazing at at you know positioning the camera and really following me wherever I went I think that was such a, a close relationship that we formed the two of us is that I, I really felt like I could do anything in a scene and that he would come after me and follow me. And because yeah. it was this intimate experience that we were trying to capture and, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if necessarily all of it was on purpose. I think Lauren would say that, I know that she and Lauren, Todd talked about that, but for me, it felt like I had a teammate in Todd in the sense that I could do anything or try anything and mm -hmm. he would always be there to capture it. And that's really freeing as an actress to feel like, you know, if I wanted to do something in the scene, like that whole hand thing, actually, I actually had a blister that popped and that hand shaking on the, on the boat. I remember we finished that race. And I remember like, I remember like just my hands literally were shaking. And the fact that Todd tilted down to catch that was just like happenstance that he did. And it's such a, like when I watched it, I'm just like, yeah, I'm like the <laughs> movie. because, because that was real, that was like a real feeling, you yeah. know, I literally felt like I couldn't move my hands when you're holding mm -hmm. these doors for so long, your hands start to shake. I was like, wow, what a great thing and it looks really painful it was very painful yeah. but I'm really proud of it it's like those those little little things that you go as an actress like that was not a like conscious choice but I'm glad that that choice was like captured and that's why you know filmmaking is such a team effort <laughs> that's awesome that's like one of the that's one of the shots from the trailer that I remember like I saw the trailer in a, a theater just a couple of weeks ago and that actually that mm. got a reaction from somebody that like was two or three rows behind me they were like oh what is this movie so I, now that I know that it wasn't intentional that is that is really cool and I have to say that has to be like such a that has to be like such a mind fuck for you that you are uh when a performance that is so controlled and it's physically controlled and then like if your character is sort of uh, emotionally unable to guide something while physically like if you can't control the boat you sort of physically can't control it. I'm, that's just blowing my mind um <laughs> it was a lot of multitasking I mean yeah. I think that I it was something that I knew reading the script was going to be a huge challenge was there's so many things like obviously I I really had to physically like completely transform myself the role emotionally I had to really go to a very dark place and transform my mind to play this part and then on top of it like I've worked in this industry since I was very young and I've watched how important it is that the number one person on the call sheet, the like lead of the movie that's in every single frame, how important it is that they set a tone that, you know, for the entire set. Because when the lead actor is having a horrible time, everybody's having a horrible time. And so right. the amount of energy I had to expend on a daily basis was like, I really wanted to make sure that if anybody was looking at me when we weren't rolling, I was having a good time. And, and that was like a choice that I had to make. Like, even when things were falling apart and going wrong, Lauren would be like, oh my God. And she was like very much like really good at keeping it like inside, but I could always tell. And I was just like, okay, what jokes can I make? What can I do to make it easier? How can I, you know, how can I help mediate the situation right now? Because we have to get the day and I want everyone to keep moving and keep smiling and keep feeling like, oh, well, if Isabel's okay, then I guess we're all fine. Yeah. And then I really kind of channeled all of that, like, you know, those deeper, darker emotional things into my performance. And then, you know, when I would get home, I would just completely crash. I mean, I was, I think if, I, I never have slept and not dreamed for, for the, so long. Like I would get home and I, I would just like, <laughs> I would just like dive deep into like, 
you know, deep sleep, <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> and then wake up in the morning to my alarm as if someone had like just electrocuted me. I was like, <gasps> okay, yeah. I go. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a couple of times throughout the movie where the way that it's edited is like, like, as soon as you're done, you have to start again. And I was actually curious. I was like, that has to be how it feels. Because I mean, I can barely like carry the groceries upstairs without feeling like I'm going to die. So um, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I wanted to know what you think Alex can learn as an athlete from Jamie. Um, Team. Just, that she has that she she has that one line I think early in the in the where she's where you're sitting by yourself and she says someone like comes at her and she was like fuck you we're a team um yeah okay okay and Alex doesn't come up with them she doesn't move from her seat yeah. it's not because she it's not because she can of course mm-hmm. she can but I I also think you know something about Alex that I've really found interesting to play with is that she likes being slightly misunderstood she likes being this mystery she likes people not being able to figure her out and I think it doesn't necessarily come from her setting out to do that I think for me in my experience being a very ambitious person since I was very young it can be very isolating at times when you're going after a goal and other people around you are prioritizing other things in their life it does sometimes, there were times when I was younger that I felt incredibly frustrated by it, which to me now makes me laugh because I'm like, I'm so young. (laughs) But when I was like 16, I took things so seriously. And I remember I would be like, nobody, nobody knows what they want to do when they graduate or anything like that. And it's like, of course they don't, they're 16, but I had always kind of known what I wanted to do since I was very young. And so it was a sort of isolating feeling. I felt like I couldn't connect with people my own age. Um, and I worked in an industry where I'm constantly surrounded by adults. So I had a lot of older adult friends yeah. and it really wasn't until I was, I was 19. I did a 10 day silent meditation. And I remember like, I had this like one full day Ooh. where I lived every moment of my life where someone told me that I was, I was so mature for my age. And it like made me cry <laughs> for the first half of the day and then laugh the second half of the day, because all I was thinking is like, I am so young. I'm about to be 20. Like, what have I been doing these past like three, four years feeling like I'm like weighed down by this? And that's something that I, you know, I tried to revisit and bring into this performance as Alex is kind of like this, you know, feeling like there is no time. Like there's no time. This is, this is the the here and now, and this is the time and I have to do it now. And I have to be successful at it now. And, and the frustration that comes from, from having that weighing over you. And then also kind of liking this place of being misunderstood because it means that nobody's actually getting close enough to you to hurt you yeah the only thing able to hurt you is yourself and and that's really like what I would say I hope Alex you know would learn by the end of it and I and I think she kind of she kind of does a little bit but but also there is that big whole question of like well what's next yeah oh gosh yeah I like um I like how Alex was keeping people at such an arm's length. I find that I was so, so captivated by that. I I don't know whether it's like you storming through a room, you don't have to say anything. I, I, I wondered if maybe Alex was wondering what people were saying about her, thinking about her. I, 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 I'm so drawn to you in this movie when you're not even saying anything and um, you can sort of, sort of cut somebody down with just like a turn of your eyes or the turn of your face. Um, I guess one last question before I let you go, because I didn't realize we've been talking for 20 minutes already. (laughs) I love the chemistry that you have with um, uh, the character of Danny. Mm. Uh, That pool table scene, when I watched it again the other night, I rewound it and watched it. Like, as soon as it was over, I, I went back and watched it again, because that is unlike anything that we see Alex do in that movie she's you know flirtatious she's chatty um and I was curious what you can tell me about that chemistry and how essential that is to um sort of be a balm for her Mm -hmm. you know that scene was my audition scene funny enough I mean I taped another scene I taped the scene with Jamie in the hallway but that was the audition scene that I first was sent and Mm -hmm. I remember feeling like what I loved about Alex is like, she has this list of things, right. That she wants to do. She's always very goal oriented. And so there's something that I wanted to bring to this sort of 
relationship where when it begins and in its beginnings, that that, that is like, you know, kind of a, a goal with hers. And also something that Laura and I talked about is it's not like Alex can't have relationships. It's just that she chooses not to prioritize mm-hmm. them. And so this relationship with Danny sort of like comes out of nowhere, but they have like incredible chemistry. And also I think Danny represents a lot of things to her that she wishes that she had this like way of letting go this like ease and that's because Danny has gone through a similar thing to Alex which is alluded to like in a conversation that they have prior where she goes like take it from someone who's been in your shoes you know you're overdoing it um and what was great actually about that is you know I knew those lines very well because I auditioned with that scene and Delone is it was her first movie and when you work with first time actors. What I actually love is they bring a freshness and Mm -hmm. almost like um, a levity to everything because there is this natural curiosity. And and that's something that very often is, is, I feel like I've worked more and more, you have to remind yourself to like be in this Mm -hmm. place of listening because that's the most important part. And working with her was so easy to be present. It was so easy to just like let everything slip away and be there with her Mm -hmm. and and she's just an incredible person. I mean, I really love, love her so much. Like yeah. when we first met, I really felt like I was like, I was like Lauren, this is who you cast play my girlfriend. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I like, she's so out of my league in every possible way. <laughs> and like, on top of that, just an incredible human, like so kind, like, and, and very much embodies a lot of these qualities. Like, you know, she's not as, as intense. Like, you know, what I love about, alone too is like she's always a little bit late as a person mm-hmm. and that was something that I felt like you know really worked for Danny and for me like I'm always early and that's like totally Alex 100% <laughs> so you know we really found this wonderful chemistry of being these opposites and and in that scene you know we we didn't have much time to film it I think we did like two or three takes of it on either side but we really just had fun and and that was one of my favorite days that we've filmed because like there's so much that I was doing like where I had to be you know in these like emotional places by myself alone and it was nice to be standing across from her and getting to like play with her and we and we did that scene like just different ways and and Lauren cut it together the way that she wanted to and and that was it was a really beautiful scene to do also because it was like the day before we did our um, breakup scene which as you see in the movie is like incredibly emotional that really kind yeah. of was this nice, you know, way to way to start that, you know, that week was like we filmed most of my scenes with her back to back and then yeah. the breakup scene last. Mm. That that sort of like a uh, quality of, you know, of a first time actor it reminds me of like um like something that that people say about kids, how kids have sort of no vanity and kids will always be so honest with you because they don't, they, they haven't been sort of conditioned to be self-conscious about stuff. So um, that has to be so thrilling as an actor to have that, that honesty come out right away. Yeah. Yeah. She also had, you know, something that I hadn't experienced, honestly, since Orphan. Like, I think the best actors you work with are people that push your buttons. Mm-hmm. And we had gotten to know each other very well. And like in, in a scene. And when I, when I did Orphan, like I did the scene with Vera for me again. I remember she like literally pushed me once in the middle of a scene, not hard, but just as a way to kind of like, you know, get me out of my head, set yeah. everything off and, and everything feels fresh. And then like you continue the scene and it turns into a, this whole other beast because like all of a sudden you're like shaken out of your headspace and you're in this like place of vulnerability where you're like, someone just pushed me and I'm like so emotional <laughs> as it is, you know? And so with, with Delone, when we did that scene in the bathroom, like that scene ended after she says second best, I say, wow, and I grab my stuff. Yeah. And oh, the harsh. rest of that scene, she was supposed to be saying as I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening is she just started grabbing at my sweatshirt. That was completely improvised. Then all uh-huh. of a sudden, we're like, you know, all of a sudden, I'm like sobbing. She's crying. We're on the floor. We're sobbing and crying. And we're like saying the rest of the stuff, which was supposed to be, you know, was supposed to be said as I'm like on my out of the door. And it brought this scene into a whole new space that was like completely uncharted territory where it ended and like Lauren didn't call cut for like five minutes. Delone and I were on the ground hugging each other, sobbing. And 
<laughs> Todd or DP is like sniffling behind the camera. <laughs> and then like five minutes go by and I just hear Lauren in the other room. She was on the other side of the bathroom, just going, cut. And then the door <laughs> opens and we all laid on the floor and cried because it was like, we had, and yeah. we knew that that was the, like, we, we did like two more takes after that, but we knew that that was, that was the scene. Like we had found something that was not scripted. That was not in, in the thing that was, that was completely fresh and new and felt so real that like we all just had to sit on the floor and cry for 20 minutes in the middle of in the middle of the day wow. ah. and that's what you get from working with somebody new I feel like it's like something fresh yeah. always because they're either I you know sometimes they can be timid but she was not scared and I loved that about her like mm. she just kind of attacked everything um which is thrilling it's thrilling to work with somebody who does yeah. that yeah that's awesome well, I think that might be all I have for you. I'm uh, thank you so much for your generosity and your time. I love this movie so so much, and I think you are um, just fucking incredible in it. So um, thank you, yeah. thank you so much, and thank you for your time. I'm yeah. <laughs> it's nice to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stay safe. Have a good day. Thank you have a good one. <laughs>